Thank you for joining me on my masterclass. Now today I will be teaching you 10 steps to create lifelong growth. That's 10 steps to create lifelong growth. Now, a lot of people want to be wealthy. I've seen people that have goals to be rich. But you see, if your goal is to be rich, you're never going to be rich. I've seen this, you know. I mean, I've pastored people and then I've mentored people. I do have some experience. And if your goal is to be rich, you're not going to be rich. However, if your goal is to address those habits that are making you poor or to acquire those habits that will make you rich, then nothing can stop you becoming wealthy. I'm going to say this one more time. If your goal is just to be rich, you're not going to be rich. But if your goal is to destroy those habits that keep you poor or acquire habits that can make you wealthy, you're going to be rich. See, I'm going to tell you because being wealthy is all about lifestyle. Wealth is a lifestyle. So it's not just that you just jump from poverty to wealth like that. No, you have to acquire some habits that are going to end up in wealth. Now, one of the very first habits is this. Number one, always spend less than you earn. Always spend less than you earn. Now, I see a lot of people, when you tell them this, they just tell you, how much am I even earning? And they say it with a lot of anger. That is poverty talking. That is poverty talking. Nobody is responsible for how much you earn other than you. And nobody is responsible for increasing your earnings other than you. Even your own boss, your employer, your employer is only responsible for paying you what he agreed to pay you. He's not responsible for paying you what you think you are worth. So never, because of any reason at all, spend more than you earn. That is the root of poverty. That's the very first one. Now, the second one is this. Never spend impulsively. Never spend impulsively or without planning. Don't just walk to a store. Maybe you went to a store to go and buy some water and to go and buy some bread. And then as you're standing in the checkout line, you just see some chewing gum. Hmm, this looks good. And then you buy. That is impulsive spending. Now, it might not make you poor once, but once you give into impulsive spending, you're rewiring your brain. You're making that those never-ending endings that's really feeding impulse. You're making them stronger. And so if you do it once, you're going to do it again, and then you're going to keep on strengthening those muscles in your brain that feed impulsive actions. So starve them so that whenever you go into a store or into a shop or into uh, wherever, you only buy what you plan to buy. Now, the third one is this. Have a budget and stick to it. Have a budget and stick to it. Before money comes, have a budget. Because when you have a budget, you're actually telling money where you want money to go. If you don't have a budget and you can start spending, actually what's happening is that money is telling you where, it should, where to go. You have to be the one in control. You have to tell money where to go. Okay, you're going to go here. You're going to go there. You're going to go here and you're not going to go there. So have a budget and then stick to it. It's very important. Now, listen to this. Never borrow to consume. Never borrow to consume. Okay, so for instance, now maybe your friend is getting married and then you are invited to the wedding and then your friend tells you, okay, listen, you have to buy what they call Ashoibi in Nigeria. It's a very popular term. But if you're not, if you're not Nigerian or West African, you're not going to know what it means. Well, it just means that, you know, like a uh, just a set of clothes, like a uniform that all the friends of the bride and the friends of the groom wear. And they tell you, okay, it's going to cost you like $500. And don't worry, even if you don't, you don't have it there, uh, you just borrow the money and then you buy it. Listen, tell such a friend, look, I can come with my mufti, I can come with my just my regular clothes, but if that's not good enough for you, I can come. Never borrow money for consumption. Never borrow money because you want to go and buy a new phone. No, 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 that is consumption. Never borrow money. Borrow money for sensible things. So that's the fourth one. Only borrow for education, for investment, and for health. Now look at that. Only borrow for education, for investment, and for health. You see, education is investment in yourself. So it's good. Now, investments, yeah, it's good because especially when you have a sure banker investment, an investment that you know is going to yield a return that is higher than the rate of investment, yeah, that is very good. And then your health, because if you have no health, you cannot work. So only borrow or only take out loans for those things. That's very important. Now, prioritize your needs, not your wants. So you've got to understand, what are my needs? Your needs are your necessities, expenditure. You've got to know what your needs are. So prioritize your needs, not your wants. A lot of times I see people, they come on my DMs and they tell me, I'm a poor single mother. My child is dying. Please, Pastor Reno, you need to give me money. Look, I am not a nice person. I'm a wise person. When I see those kind of people, I don't even just respond to them. How You have a phone. Is a phone, uh, your, I mean, is a phone a need? Is it a necessity? You have a child that you say is dying. That is a necessity. Now, you are begging me for money 
through your phone, you have money for internet data, you have money for a phone, and you say that, that your child is dying. No, that means you do not know the difference between your needs and your wants. So, I mean, I am not an emotional person. You cannot, emotion, you cannot emotionally blackmail me. I'm a very focused person. I have principles. So, here's what I tell you. Focus on your needs, not your wants. And then another one is this. Invest your capital, spend your profit. A lot of people are spending their capital. A lot of people are spending their capital. You see someone with an iPhone 14, and then he tells you, you know what? I, I just need money to start up a business. No. How come you have money to buy an iPhone 14 when it was a gift? Okay, if it was a gift, sell it and then buy a cheaper phone and then use the rest of the money what's that your capital you cannot be living on your capital and then expecting people to give you money to live no 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 you see a lot of all these people that you see that you want to be like they are spending their profits they're not spending their capital don't spend your capital the way people are spending their profits that's one another one now the next one is this follow your passion not your fashion follow your passion not your fashion now listen to this you got a passion God gave you a set of best skills, talents, and things that you're passionate about. The reason God gave them to you is so that you can use them to drive your professional life. So if you like to make people laugh, you know, you're a funny person, you know how to crack jokes, don't just leave it at that and you still call it a hobby. No, turn it into a business, become a comic, become a comedian. People are making millions of dollars becoming just comedians. You know, people are, a lot of people are making money from that. You can do it too. If you have a skill, maybe you like to just like um, sew clothes. Don't just, you know, like make clothes for your family and friends. No, become a fashion designer. That's your passion. Make it into a business. That's why God gave you that passion. If you like to speak, if you like to talk, yeah, then that's good. Become a professional speaker. Be become, have a YouTube channel. Talk to people. You know, if it may be, it might be that you have, you want to teach people something, or it might, it might, it might be that maybe you want to talk about current affairs, but never let your passion just be a hobby. Turn it into something that makes money for you. And then also, be generous to your future, not just to the poor. A lot of people are generous to the poor and they're not generous to their future. And especially religious people. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You need to take care of yourself first because this is it's not selfishness. What did Christ say in scripture? He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, first of all, you have to love yourself. So when you don't have something for your future, you've not, you, you don't have investments for your future, you don't have life insurance for your future, you don't have an annuity for your future, you don't have a piece of land to build a house for your future so you can have accommodation. And then you say, no, I want to be good because, you know, the Bible tells us to be good. And then you start giving money to poor people, giving money to people. That is called early overgenerosity. And early overgenerosity is wickedness to your future self. Now, finally, listen, have a financial goal that motivates you. Have a financial goal that motivates you. So, for instance, you know, it might be that, okay, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. Write it down on a post-it note. Put it on your fridge, put it on your mirror, put it in maybe your bedroom closet, put it everywhere where you can see that where it can constantly motivate you. And then when you have that, it's constantly motivating you, it's constantly in your face, then it begins to widen your mind to think about ways to empower that financial goal. But when you don't have a financial goal, when money comes, you just spend it impulsively. And a person who cannot suppress impulse for principles can never be rich. Now, I hope all of this has made sense. If you have questions after watching this, please put your questions in the comment section of this video. My staff will bring it up to me and I'll do my best to respond to each and every category. But you've got to remember, I do not have a WhatsApp or a Telegram channel, a Gmail email address. And I will never approach you in the comment section of my videos with contact numbers or with email addresses. Those are spammers and those are scammers. They've scammed a lot of my followers. Please do not be scammed. Now, this is Pastor Renu, the Apostle of Prosperity, saying, God bless. But when no travels all around the world, I hope you get inspired about what you see. I was full of greatness, Reno is a master. Only one man against the old world in large, fighting with the monsters. Poverty, I can't stand. That's why Reno is a